Good evening. Thank you for joining us this evening for another Walters Art Museum Artist Talk. And my name is Adriana Prozer. I am Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Quincy Scott, Curator of Asian Art here at the Walters Art Museum. Support for the Walters Art Museum is made possible through the combined generosity of individual donors, foundations, corporations and grants from the City of Baltimore, Maryland State Arts Council, Citizens of Baltimore County, and Howard County Government and Howard County Arts Councils. Please note that this program is being recorded and will be available on the museum's YouTube channel and Facebook page. Tonight, I have the great pleasure and um, honor, in honor of Pride Month, to be in conversation with local artist Richard Cleaver. Rick has been working in sculpture for 45 years. He received his BFA from MICA and an MA from the University of Wisconsin, uh, Milwaukee. He has exhibited nationally, including solo exhibitions at the Baltimore Museum of Art, American University Museum, Kohler Art Center, Noyes Museum, Bernice Steinbaum Gallery in New York and Miami, and Franz Bader Gallery. Group exhibition venues include the Peabody Essex Museum, International Sculpture Center, Arizona State Museum, Kentucky Museum of Art and Craft, Erie Art Museum, the Corcoran Gallery. His work is in the collections of the Crocker Art Museum, George and Dorothy Sachs Collection at the De Young Museum, Baltimore Museum of Art, the Diane and Sandy Besser Collection at Arizona, Arizona State University, Fuller Craft Museum, and Delaware Museum. His awards include National Endowment from, for the Arts, Evergreen Foundation, Maryland State, Council, State Arts Council, Trawick Prize, Franz and Virginia Bader Fund, and a Baker Artist Award. Phew! Rick, you've been busy. Thank um, you. <laughs> we have... Um, we have one of your works uh, here, Cult of the Czar, um, up on our uh, screen. And I'd like to ask you, uh, I, I know you're, you're a great museum go goer and have been for most of your life. What kinds of works in the Walters Museum of Art collection have inspired you? Um, the... Uh, uh... A, a number of works really, it's kind of a hybrid, I have a hybrid interest in uh, uh, anything from uh, Egyptian art to uh, African art, which is pretty much the same. Uh, the medieval art, uh, the Asian arts, um, and some 19th century artwork there too. Uh, and th this this piece is um, uh, I I've always been interested in uh, altar like works, and uh, uh, so this is in a way like a, a mini altar. It's uh, uh, just twenty one inches high, uh, and uh, it's pretty much inspired by also my. Catholic upbringing as well. I Let's, spent a lot of time in church when I was growing up. Joy, could we switch to the next slide? Thanks. Uh, and uh, I, my, my first museum experiences re were really going to the Philadelphia Museum when I was a teenager. And I really was fascinated by uh, the artwork there. And in fact, I wanted to make work that looked like that, that was uh, precious and sacred and uh, that was under glass, really. And um, when I, I came to Baltimore to go to, to MICA in the early 70s, uh, I gravitated to the Walters uh, uh, Art Gallery at the time. And uh, was uh, I, I went there a few times a week and uh, roamed around and uh, 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 sketched a lot. And it, it uh, a lot of the works uh, uh, like this uh, shrine 
uh, influenced, uh, you know, the, anything that came out of me later, uh, even now 40 years later, it's still uh, all these things add up. So uh, if we influence. if we look oh, okay if we look back to the your previous your work that we started with um, just compared to the shrine we were just looking at um, so I noticed that you um, you know you're you're you have a lot of um, detailed and inset kinds of, of things into your work. So is that the kind of influence you're talking about when, when you refer to the shrine that we were just looking at? Use of gold? Uh, yeah, because the gold, gold to me is, you know, uh, a, a precious metal. And I use uh, freshwater pearls and uh, crystal beads. Uh, and all the surfaces are painted. Uh, painted in oil uh, in in detail. The uh, the bulk of the pieces of sculpted out of uh, uh, clay, modeled out of clay, and uh, or hand built. And I fire all my uh, work at at uh, Baltimore Clay Works. Uh, and um, uh, when when I was a student at MICA, I was a uh, ceramic major. And uh, I gravitated to that department uh, because I just was enamored with getting my hands in, in clay, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did a lot of, I, I carve it a lot, too. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that, that, that's interesting to me because even though you're, you're working, working in clay, um, when we look at these images on the screen, um, it's it's hard to it's actually hard to tell what the the base material is, uh, and and um, a lot of those those kinds of shrines we're talking about do involve a lot of carving. So I think you know it's it's interesting how you're um, using that material to to get a kind of multiplicity of um, sense of, of different materials. Yeah, I um, uh, pretty much overwhelm the material by adding adding more and more uh, mar uh, marks with the painting and also uh, uh, adding uh, so that uh, the clay essentially is smothered by <laughs> all the uh, uh, additives I, I uh, Put on it, mm. um, like there, there is some wood in this piece too, and uh, uh, many times people think my work is made of wood. Actually, all all wood, a uh, carved wood, because mm. I handle the clay um, um, many times as if it was wood. Mm. Uh, 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 but I, I do um, most of it's actually modeled, and it just winds up looking like uh, painted carved wood. Yeah, interesting. Uh, so, so as an, an Asianist, you mentioned Asia before, and if we could yes. move um, forward a couple of slides right there, yeah. Um, you know, I, I can't as an Asianist not look at the work we were just looking at without kind of thinking of images like these, mm -hmm. because I noticed that, um, you know, out of a lot of your figures, there are these almost leaf-like, um, protrusions that remind me a bit of of these flames that you see in Thai Buddhas that give um, that 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 really repre represent kind of the transcendence of 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 Buddhism that a Buddhist um, is working towards. Could you talk a little bit about about that? Sort of in sort of in the back of my head and. Uh, is uh, a lot of Catholic imagery because I, I went slide, to please. Catholic school and uh, the um, uh, there uh, are images of the apostles with tongues of fire on their heads and um, which is also uh, and I'm, I'm sure the images in uh, uh, 
you know, medieval paintings and whatever were uh, uh, lifted from uh, the East, from uh, uh, Asian art. And uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's kind of a halo effect and, and uh, which has meaning for me. And uh, also uh, kind of the idea of the aura um, I uh, uh, often suffer from uh, ocular migraines where I see uh, auras around uh, objects and uh, when I'm having this mi the migraines. And it's, uh, it, that has influenced what I, uh, the aesthetics of my, my work. And, uh, and, and just looking at uh, um, uh, uh, particularly uh, Indian art, uh, that uh, the aesthetics there have uh, are uh, a big influence on me, uh, the uh, Indian architecture and, and uh, sculpture, mm -hmm. um, and the uh, uh, the idea of uh, 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 points uh, around pieces kind of, uh, um, and that's kind of an aura idea or a halo idea. Next um, next slide, please. Yeah, yes. I mean, you, you, yes, you talk, like, go ahead. Like this image of the Buddha, uh, I, I feel a, a need often when I'm uh, working to add uh, uh, painted flames or, uh, a branch-like uh, 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 forms uh, on the uh, a perimeter of works, and uh, uh, you know, a, a piece like this is a direct uh, influence on uh, a, a lot of the uh, uh, pieces I've done in the past several years. And the next slide, please. Yeah, uh, I um, you were talking about this branch-like imagery that you use, and um, and even um, it, it, I noticed that you have this really there's this tension in in a lot of your works um, where between sort of um, nature nature and and decay, and one of the elements that that I find fascinating um, is that, you know, that you have um, on the base of, of this piece, uh, you have these branch-like kind of bluish extensions, and also on the body of that, that deer-like creature there, um, almost these kinds of crackles. Um, is there a relation between what you're doing uh, with that and um, the kind of um, repair that we see on this bowl on the right-hand side, which is a Chinese bowl, but repaired in this um, traditional Japanese kintsugi, this um, gold lacquer repair tradition. Well, yeah, I'm I'm aware of those those pieces, and uh, I I it's another uh, need of mine to uh, add a kind of uh, a faux age to the uh, uh, the works and to add uh, I, I'm interested in what uh, the effects of nature on uh, uh, the world and and of uh, um, and and time uh, and the uh, the the sort of uh, a beauty of age and the aging of uh, objects. And uh, back to my influences in museums, I was uh, uh, going back to teenager, I was looking at uh, works that were uh, ancient and old and cracked. And uh, I, I just felt there was just such beauty in that. And I, I love uh, the beauty of, uh, uh, um, a, uh, a a bare branch of a tree, and that uh, uh, kind of craggy look of the the uh, 
uh, line of the uh, tree branch, tree branches, mm. and so I, I that it finds its way into the work I do, mm. and it, it's uh, uh, a big part of how I look at things. I I love that um, you know in this kind of kind of piece which um, would be displayed during the Japanese tea ceremony, um, which of course was influenced by, by Buddhism. Um, this idea of wabi-sabi, where you have this, um, the sense of, you know, rust on metal or kind of melancholy right. that goes along with the, the realization that something isn't going to, to last forever. Um, is you know it's it's so compelling and so beautiful and i see also in in this particular piece here that um that you've you've used the imagery of skulls as well and i i wanted to um if we can go to the next slide um also you know um ask you about this is a another Buddhist piece. In this case, a Tibetan ritual box, which, um, if you can see, has has skulls all around that sort of um, frame that appears on on the on the surfaces um, or on the sides of of this box. Um, yeah, the uh, uh, I you know growing up back to growing up Roman Catholic, I. Uh, just in um, in the training, you're uh, preparing, always preparing for death, and uh, the idea of the memento mori uh, is really powerful uh, in the uh, church teachings. And uh, not that I'm one of the faithful uh, now, but I, I uh, it's a part of. Uh, just part of me, uh, this, uh, these traditions, uh, and, uh, um, it, it, it uh, like the idea of the, uh, the crucifix, you know, it's, it's about death. Mm. Uh, it's, it's about, uh, uh, and it's melan melancholic as well. Yeah. Ne next yeah. slide, please. Yeah, here's here's one of your works where where that that kind of imagery is even um, more greatly emphasized, right? And yeah, right, and and you know, uh, when I first started making artwork, I was dealing with a lot of depression and anxiety, and uh, it it comes out in those uh, images, uh, a, a kind of worry. Um, and uh, th th this piece is uh, uh, about you know, the Celtic mythology of uh, Ahern the hunter, who uh, is the a, a deity of the woods hmm. and of nature. Uh, and and the, uh, I, I've always been interested in a, a deer imagery, and uh, and I can't even explain that one. <laughs> but there, it, it's uh, 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 the, that kind of animal imagery enters my work uh, 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 usually uh, with the branches. So let's talk a little bit about format. Uh, next slide, please. Um, among the the works in the collection of the Walters Art Museum are. Uh, Buddhist manuscript cabinets like this one, and um, which which on the exterior actually have Buddhist tales. But um, if we can go to the next slide, um, let's let's play. This is one of Richard's pieces called Eros, and let's let's take a look at this video because it it gives a good sense of of the kind of uh, kinetic and um, closet or cabinet like qualities of a lot of your works. Yeah, I, I've uh, always been interested in uh, secret drawers and cabinets and uh, uh, dollhouses, and uh, which as a, a, 
a young gay boy, I was uh, fascinated by dolls and doll houses. And uh, uh, I used to, my brother and I, who's also gay, we used to make little uh, doll houses and little scenes, but they were secret uh, because we'd get in trouble, you know, playing girls games. And um, so I, I, I'm still uh, uh, continuing that that uh, uh, practice of uh, making these uh, uh, secret cabinets. That uh, I think we uh, have a, I think we have another one here. Let's let's go to the image of that one and then then play that video as well. This is a cabinet portrait. Yeah, this this is uh, called cabinet portrait and. Uh, I just finished this recently, and uh, it um, <clears throat> it uh, has parts that turn and uh, next a, image, please. A secret drawer and and it's uh, uh, inspired by uh, 19th century uh, photos of uh, group photos of men. And uh, their uh, uh, intimacy or lack of intimacy. Uh, uh, so these are. Uh, it's uh, mostly paint. This piece is mostly painted on wood, uh, uh, oil paint on wood with uh, uh, some ceramic parts and some beads, and I've used uh, some. Uh, uh, a molding compound and things like that to make uh, uh, that I, I carved that are part of this. And uh, like there's a uh, sort of a puppet hand inside wow. made of plate of plastic wood. And there's some cloth in there too. Uh, uh, these are, I mean, they're, they're so um, they're, you know, there's such fascinating objects, and I have, and I have to say that, um, you know, really, you know, and I, I would think that if you're in their presence, you you would really want to to put your hands on them, right? And, uh, and they're, they're they're made to be handled, but you know, often in museum museum or gallery situation, you know, uh, 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 a gallerist or someone or myself will have to handle it uh, mm -hmm. for the viewer. Um, but you know, they're kind of toys at the same time. They're they're meant to play with, you know. And this is uh, very dollhouse like, but it's also uh, kind of shrine like too. Uh, and and uh, uh, like a, I love architectural models as well. Mm, mm. Uh, that that hand is is ceramic, mm. and the uh, rest of it is uh, uh, a kind of a simply made uh, wooden cabinet. Uh, my uh, cabinetry skills are very basic, so I huh. uh, pretty much just made a box that uh, doors could open. Okay. And let, let's go to the the next image. Oops, the, the one after this one. The next image, please. We have a, a loop going here. Yeah, great. Oh. Uh, um, I, I, I do notice that, um, that in a lot of your images that um, you have these uh, often imagery of, of two men and um, and I'm I'm curious you mentioned your your brother who who is also gay um, curious about your you know your your upbringing and um, you know what what it meant to you or means to you really to have been uh, an artist who, uh, you know, grew up uh, some decades ago, 
and uh, when, yes, um, when I think it was much more ago. difficult <laughs> to be openly gay. Oh, it, it, it was very, very difficult growing up in the 50s and 60s and uh, feeling as if you were the worst thing that could possibly be and uh, to have your own, uh, 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 be afraid that even your own uh, family or parents would reject you. And, uh, uh, but it, 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 when I was young, I was, it took, I, I was maybe about 10 or 12 when I realized what a homosexual was. And I remember the first time I ever heard that, I was watching a television show and someone must have been gay on it or something. This was in, would have been around 1960. And uh, it was probably something like Gunsmoke or something. And uh, uh, my mother or father said what this person was and how horrible they were. And I just remember freezing, absolutely freezing. My blood ran cold. And I realized, oh, that's me. I can't let anybody know that. Mm. Um, uh, so it, it's it's hard to describe, uh, and, and uh, I'm glad there's more freedoms today. But it it, it was it was hard, and uh, like this piece of this is a uh, I did a series of, of pieces that were Madonna like. And this was in honor of my mother, uh, who, uh, uh, and she's, there's two little portraits of my brothers when they were children, they're, they're twins. Mm. And it, uh, I made these pieces that were called Mother with Twins, and, I, mm. and they were based on a photograph of my mother, but it's really more like a doll. Uh, mm. And this is in the Delaware Art Museum. Mm. Uh, and... Uh, uh, so, but m most of my work are about men, though. Uh, mm -hmm. And this piece, the face opens, and there's a little uh, painting of my mother with a uh, a, a baby carriage uh, inside. And uh, uh, so, uh, and I, I and always felt sorry for my mother because I think she was stuck in the 1950s. <laughs> with a brood of kids. And I'm not sure she really wanted to be there doing that. Uh, I mean, she, she did a good job, but it was, I don't, I don't think it was really, she wanted that to be her career, uh, which it wound up being. Mm. And there was, no, I, I, I'm glad that women make that their career though, but uh, she, she was uh, misplaced in that. So I have one um, one more question before we wrap up because we're almost over before we open up to quest other outside questions. But um, talk, can you talk to me a little bit about what what symmetry means to you, and um, you know, and and does it have uh, what role does it play in your life? It, it's sort of a balancing need of mine. Like a lot of the work I do, it's a need. It's something I have to do. And uh, the symmetry is, uh, comes naturally to me. And I, I've always felt that what I, the uh, work that I make uh, has to be uh, felt. It can't, I can't, I mean, I do think it through, but I mostly feel everything through. And uh uh, the adding of symmetry is satisfying to me. And it, it, it's uh, also, as I earlier mentioned about anxiety, it, it, it's a, 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 a balance a, uh, a, a, and relieves anxiety in a way. It also is uh, of centering uh, and uh, uh, good for the mind, like a meditation. Mm. And a lo lot of my work is like a meditation. I, I paint line after line after line uh, on the three-dimensional works. And it's uh, a kind of a mantra. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's actually um, an excellent transition to this question that I've gotten um, from from one of uh, one of our outside viewers, and that's um, you talk you know you just talked about about the meditative quality to to work to your work. Um, how long does it take you to create and finish a piece? Is the question. Uh, people often ask me this question, and um, sometimes it can take years, and sometimes uh, it's never. It's usually months, uh, sometimes months, but I, I work on a number of pieces at once, uh, and many times. I don't know how to finish something, so I put it aside, and it sometimes takes a few years before I return to it, and and keep going. Uh, but uh, sometimes I learn something from working on another piece, and that I I find the the finish to that. And many times I feel like I'm never finished with them, and uh, uh, but they're very time consuming which I, I love and I love it. And it, it, uh, it connects to the idea of uh, um, a kind of a never ending circle of uh, 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 that uh, of age and time that it, it uh, uh, things are really not finite things age and decay, but they're they they they're part of a, a circle of life. Mm. Rick, um, I want to thank you so much. I mean, this has been r really wonderful. Learning more about about your your work. I mean, it's 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 so fabulous and and intriguing. And um, you know, what better way to to learn more about it than than from you? Um, thank, thank you, thank you um, so much. So, so thanks again, um, and thank you to my colleagues Joy, Allison, and Sydney for all their help. Um, oh yeah, they, they've program. been very helpful. <laughs> and um, I wish you a, a wonderful Pride Month and a better year for all of us. Yes, yes, uh, and and to you too. Uh, and thank you so much. <laughs>